Hypothyroidism is a decrease in thyroid function in the dog. Hypothyroidism the amount of thyroid hormones does not decrease, because the amount of thyroid hormones can be normal, the same, or decreased. We are going to see this in the diagnosis. Basically hypothyroidism is a decrease in thyroid function. Thank you for coming to Vet Kayla. My name is Emma. It occurs because the thyroid is affected due to different causes, for example autoimmune thyroiditis. Autoimmune thyroiditis are antibodies of the body itself that attack the thyroid gland. Another cause can be atrophy, in which its function and size are diminished. It can also be a congenital cause, that is, you are born with this. And it can also be a tumor, a neoplasm. Once hypothyroidism has occurred, what are the most common presentations? Well, it varies according to whether it is a puppy or an adult dog. In the puppy, as we can see in the image, there is a disproportion between the head and the body. The head is huge, and also look at the legs, the limbs. There is a problem in bone development. If the newborn puppy has problems with thyroid hormones, it may have a problem with temperature regulation, and you will also notice that it is the smallest of the entire litter. What happens when there is a problem in bone development in puppies? They walk plantigrade. It means that they walk supporting the carpus or tarsus. Now let's look at this Samoyed puppy. This Samoyed puppy is a beautiful puppy and it is normal. I put it as an example because there are short haired breed puppies with hypothyroidism which can have similar hair. What happens is that there is a retention of hair in hypothyroidism, then the hair does not fall out, it grows, and an old hair remains that it should not be. Remember that in puppies there is a retention of hair. The adult dog with hypothyroidism is very common to be obese. But it is not the only thing we can see, to explain this situation I will use two images. In the first we can see Homer Simpson, fat, bald, apathetic, intolerant to exercise. This is a case that we can see in our pets with hypothyroidism. What is the other case? We have the singer of the Ramones, skinny, hairy, nervous, excitable, that's the other possibility. They are two totally opposite possibilities, which may be present, although the most common is obesity. We have already seen the presentations in the puppy and in the adult, and now we are going to continue how hypothyroidism affects the different organs. First we are going to talk about the nervous system, there is ataxia, in coordination of the limbs. Hypothyroidism must be detected as soon as possible, so that the signs do not increase over time and our pet has fewer injuries. So one of the first signs is behavior change. The stress caused by a move, a construction in the house, the death of a relative, the arrival of a new pet, produce a stressful situation that leads to a change in behavior. In hypothyroidism, there is not necessarily a stressful situation. From one day to the next, behavior changes suddenly without the presence of stress. This is something to keep in mind. In the heart, we have bradycardia and abnormalities in the electrocardiogram. There are fatty deposits in the arteries, which disrupt blood circulation. There is an increase in LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. Remember that in the ovary, we can identify the follicle, ovulation and the corpus luteum. The ovarian cycle determines the estrus cycle in the bitch. And what is estrus? It is the moment when the female accepts the male. He does not accept it at any time, he only accepts it during heat. A bitch with hypothyroidism has an altered estrus cycle, therefore, it will be difficult for her to get pregnant. Even the estrus cycle can be totally nullified. A dog with hypothyroidism can remain without heat, in other words, it is very difficult for her to get pregnant and have puppies. If some signs of hypothyroidism are just beginning and you become pregnant, you may have a miscarriage. If he goes to labor, he may have problems during labor. The male may have testicular atrophy and he will not be able to get the female pregnant. 
In the image we see a dog with skin lesions. But skin lesions have a pattern in many diseases. On the other hand, in hypothyroidism, the skin lesions can be symmetrical, asymmetric, unilateral, bilateral, it can be on one side or the other. So you have multiple presentations, so there is no specific pattern. Hypothyroidism is a cause of skin lesions, although it does not have a particular pattern. The diagnosis in the puppy is very important to do it early, so that the picture does not worsen. So we have to do complementary imaging studies. X-rays are very important to know how bone growth is. Also a thyroid ultrasound, to know the volume of the thyroid glands, and a scintigraphy to know the function. Before explaining the diagnosis, let's quickly review the video on the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. We say that under certain stimuli such as stress and cold, the hypothalamus will release the hormone TRH. TRH reaches the pituitary gland to stimulate the release of the hormone TSH. The TSH will pass into the blood and will reach the thyroid gland. In the thyroid gland it will stimulate the release of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. These thyroid hormones are going to reach different target cells to increase cellular metabolism. Most of the thyroid hormones are transported in the blood bound to proteins. These proteins are produced by the liver, and therefore the amount of protein can be increased or decreased. Because hormone-bound proteins depend on production in the liver, they can alter thyroid hormone levels. Therefore, we are very interested in free T4 for the diagnosis of hypothyroidism. For the diagnosis, we start with blood tests for TSH, free T4, and T3. There are four degrees of hypothyroidism. We have a first dog from which we take blood and measure these three hormones, normal TSH, normal free T4, normal free T3. Is it a hypothyroid dog? And we cannot rule it out. Because we have to do the HRT stimulation test, what is that? We have to measure TSH first, then inoculate TRH, and after 15 minutes we see the TSH response, which is going to have a very abrupt increase. And there we say that it is a subclinical hypothyroidism, it is a hypothyroid grade 1. On the other hand, if TSH is increased and the others are normal, it is a grade 2. And why is TSH increased? Because the thyroid gland is already beginning to malfunction, and then TSH increases its concentration to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. Then the thyroid hormones reach their normal values and therefore you see them normal, but the TSH is increased, because it is telling the thyroid gland to work harder, to get the thyroid hormones to be normal, this is grade 2. We're going to grade 3, and free T4 started to decrease. In grade 4, free T4 is low and T3 is also greatly decreased. What is the use of knowing if it is grade 1 or grade 3? This helps us to do the treatment. Because the treatment will depend a lot on what grade it is, to know the dose of levothyroxine. Well, if we suspect autoimmune thyroiditis, what we have to measure is antiperoxidase antibodies. Peroxidase is that enzyme that allows iodine to pass from the follicular cells to the colloid to form the hormones T3 and T4. So if there is no peroxidase, there are no thyroid hormones. That is why we have to detect these antibodies. Treatment is with levothyroxine, thyroxine equals T4. With regard to treatment, three points must be taken into account. The first point is that the dose we use in dogs is different from that of humans, the half-life, the duration that is in the body in dogs is 18 hours. On the other hand, in humans it is from one day to seven days, there is a huge difference. This regarding the difference between pets and humans, which has to be clarified. Regarding improvement in treatment, once we start treatment, changes in locomotion and neurological signs can improve within a month. The skin can improve in three months. 
The reproductive signs, in case you want your dog to get pregnant, can improve in a year. It is a lifelong treatment. The third point is that you have to do controls at first every one month, then every three months, and once it is stable every six months. But this patient must continue to be monitored for the rest of his life. I send you a big kiss, and see you in the next video.